Hey guys, Dr. Daniel Sagai, board certified dermatologist. Hope you guys are doing well. I wanted to do a video on vitamin C serums. So I've done videos on vitamin C. You don't wanna leave your serums by the windowsill where the sunlight can come and get it and deactivate it or oxidize or really decrease the potency of your vitamin C serum because vitamin C itself is very labile. It can get deactivated very easily in the skin and it's very pH sensitive. And so there are all these different formulations and you might see different vitamin C derivatives to increase stability. A lot of the times though, for me at least, I wanna work on dark spots and that's just epidermis, your top layer of skin. There are some studies of more stable vitamin C deriv derivatives that can go deeper into the skin towards the dermis and increase collagen production. Pretty cool, vitamin C is part of the collagen synthesis pathway. And so you might see some benefits of using vitamin C for us people in our mid thirties and on. That's great. I'm really more concerned about the dark spots on my face and that's more epidermis, right? And so me growing up in Hawaii, I have dealt with hyperpigmentation and lentigines or sun freckles, uh, you know, after acne, like I have a little pimple on my nose here. We're definitely normalized pimples here on the channel. Uh, you know, we're not all about having perfect skin, but this acne will probably leave a little blemish on my skin, some brown, you know, I'll get a brown spot for uh, months even afterwards because of my skin type. I definitely tan, uh, tend to tan easily. And after having any kind of rash or pimple, it will leave a, a blemish or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. See here, a little bit of that brown spot here, that was after a pimple. So vitamin C, very fragile, like we talked about. Ascorbic acid is the common ingredient or active ingredient of vitamin C you might see on the packaging for your vitamin C serums. I've talked about uh, CeraVe's vitamin C serum before in the past. This is a great affordable option. It can be less than 20 bucks or around 20 bucks for this one fluid ounce tube. I have done videos of how, wow, it can really turn orange or brownish or orange, orange slash brown pretty quick even like after a month of use. So I threw this, I opened this up and I threw it into the fridge and it's been in the fridge for over a month. I wanna see if it has oxidized. Because once it oxidizes, it will lose its efficacy pretty quickly. On CeraVe's website, for people who have brought it up to, who, who've brought up the change in color so quickly, they say not to worry, it's still working. I, th I believe they said six months of use is fine. It should still work as it's supposed to. It's just that it does change color quickly. So let's see how it looks after leaving in the fridge. Not bad. So I think it preserves the color very well. So keep it in your fridge does help with preserving this vitamin C serum. So that was nice. I threw it in the fridge. It's been in there for a while. That was my drink fridge. You can see that's where I keep my beer. You don't need a dedicated skincare fridge. There are different concentrations of ascorbic acid. This one is 10% ascorbic acid. There are, it can range from like 2% in your topical regimen, uh, your, in your products to 20% or even more, maybe 25%. Once you start going over 20%, you increase your risk of irritation. Although a lot of people can be sensitive to 10% to 20% as well. So it all depends on what you can tolerate. For me, I think 20% is my limit. I like uh, Obagi's 20% uh, vitamin C serum, uh, ascorbic acid 20%. That one actually does uh, do a really nice job in uh, treating the hyperpigmentation while not irritating my skin. But everyone's very different. And so more does not mean better. It's all about what you can use on a regular basis. Let me show you Vichy's um, vitamin C serum. This one I've used a lot. This is a lift active vitamin C brightening skin corrector. Solid vitamin C serum. I'd say probably six months is kind of, is, is done. Uh, and I'm sad to see it get so dark, but this is the very end of it. See how it's kind of like this brown color to it. This is it probably towards its last end of its lifespan here but a great serum. I wanna do a, a video overview of it when it's fresh and really happy. This is a sad serum, but I just wanna show you what it looks like when it's oxidized and the potency has probably gone down in this. But this one's 15%. The ampules I've talked about before are 10% ascorbic acid rock. Now that's a great serum that I have really liked. And the, the capsules, those are nice and preserved so that you can also find some capsules. I don't know why Rock is, uh, maybe they've pulled it, but I don't see that uh, those capsules anymore. 
I know I mentioned in previous posts, but I have a hard time finding links to it and finding it on sale. So those capsules that are really nice that keep it preserved, I'm not I'm having a hard time finding them, but I did review their dropper serum, the other one, the multi-action vitamin C uh, serum, and that one's really nice, but it uses a derivative, it's the ethyl derivative of ascorbic acid. And that one is a newer one. I wanna see more studies on it because supposedly that one's very stable and can go down deeper into the dermis and maybe help with collagen, maybe. So we'll see more studies on that, but there's a whole bunch of different vitamin C serums that you could consider. Um, but you know, things that stick in my mind that are really good would be Maylove's uh, Glow Maker. That's a vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid. And that is a dupe to SkinCeutical C for Lick, which is $170, whereas Maylove is 30 bucks. Very similar, but the studies that back up SkinCeuticals is there and you're paying for that uh, trusted brand with the studies. Maylove, I love that brand, great, but doesn't have all the studies backing it up like SkinCeuticals. So uh, much more affordable. I like that brand a lot. Naturium, also a nice vitamin C serum as well. Their comp that vitamin C complex, very nice. I loved how it felt on my skin as soon as I put it on. Affordable at Target for $20. Has some glutathione and gold to help stabilize it as well. Other things that I like would be La Roche-Posay. They have nice vitamin C serums, although the dropper bottle can smell a little much. Want to show you the tubes, the tubes of vitamin C uh, of La Roche Posay. There's a pure vitamin C cream, firming moisturizing filler, and this has neurosensing, which is nice and soothing. And then the also they also have the active vitamin C 10%. And uh, this one looks very similar to this one. This one I believe is less than 10%, but has a neurosensing, which is soothing. So if you have rosacea and you have trouble tolerating retinoids, vitamin C serums, you might wanna consider the pure vitamin C cream, which neurosensing helps soothe skin. So it minimizes the chances of you getting irritation and it has less than the 10% ascorbic acid. I'll put down below what the percentage is, but this one is 10%. And these are quite old and oh, look at this. I, I did a video on this uh, a few months ago and look at that. See how it just, it's all crusty uh, here. And oh, look at the inside of it. That is, that does not look good, but that is um, it on its way out. This is not as dramatic, almost looks like brown syrup. See that orange texture? You can tell it's already starting to oxidize. But the more I squirt out, the beginning part, you can see that gradient starts at orange. That's when it was more towards the surface and it got the oxygen to it. This was more protected in the back of the tube. You see that gradient, right? It goes from almost a brownish orange to that light yellow. It does have a smell to it, but I don't, I don't mind it. You know, I don't mind fragrance uh, in my products, but some people are sensitive to it. So La Roche-Posay does a great job with their vitamin C serums. Uh, I have to do a video on their dropper bottle, which is, uh, you know, very popular, but I, in the, when I first used it, I was a little offended by it. So I wanna do another, give it another chance and see how it goes. I do have that right here. I got two boxes. I believe this one is, what I started off with and I'm, this is, oh, look at that. I mean, this looks awful. This looks like a, a house that's been neglected. Just look at that. This is just a sign of neglect right there. Look at, uh, I'm afraid to even open this up. This is like syrupy, dark, almost like honey. So that is not something you wanna put on your face at this point. I mean, it's probably fine, but it's probably not gonna give you the benefits you want. Um, but yeah, I'm totally gonna to toss that. And I have a fresh one here that I will compare in another video. Totally brand new where you, I even attached the dropper part yet, but we'll do a review on that soon. So in general, vitamin C is great. I'm, I'm so glad I incorporated it into my routine, my morning routines uh, since I started social media a year and a half ago. I always knew vitamin C was a good thing. And some dermatologists say, hey, it's not even that necessary, but I have found a lot of benefits in it. And I can tell you that having chemical peels, retinoids, uh, you know, over the years, I've been able to lighten dark spots, but there were some really 
really resistant ones. And I'll show you up above that I had a lot of brown spots. Now, not with having any filtered, uh, you know, touch-ups in the, in the images, I've gotten, a, I got, I've gotten rid of a lot of them. So it's kind of amazing adding that into your morning routine. You could use it at night. You could even apply it with your retinoid, but you're increasing your risk of irritation. I usually reserve the nighttime routine to have my retinol as the main player. And then the morning will be your vitamin C serum. So the order of things would be lightest to thickest, thinnest to thickest. So cleanse your face, apply your lightweight vitamin C serum, then a moisturizer, and then a sunscreen. At bedtime, you can cleanse your face, moisturize, and a retinoid, or retinoid and then moisturizer. Uh, and that's, that's how I do it. Vitamin C, think about orange juice with your breakfast, do your vitamin C uh, serum in the morning because it will really give you nice benefits, not only just working on the dark spots, but it helps fight free radical damage. So it does decrease the photo aging process. Photo aging can manifest in different ways. Fine lines and wrinkles, uh, brown spots, red spots, white spots, all those things can really uh, take a toll. You know, all, all the ex external uh, aggressors can really take a toll on our skin, pollution, tobacco smoke, UV radiation, all those things really do take a toll on our skin. So vitamin C is nice to be there in addition to sunscreen. It doesn't replace sunscreen, but it works well with sunscreen. Uh, sunscreens are great UV blocker, whereas this is just kind of as a nice extra barrier to protect your skin from the external uh, aggressors. So I like vitamin C serums a lot. It gives a nice glow up to my face. It's really nice because some of these have hyaluronic acid and they are hydrating and it gives you, it gives you a nice dewy look, which is very much in uh, nowadays. So I hope this video is helpful. I just want to talk about vitamin C's very quickly. I'll have some links down below uh, for these products and please like the video, please subscribe to the channel and I hope you guys have a nice fall season and you don't neglect your vitamin C serums, use them up. I think that's the only time when it's kind of cool to have a skincare fridge is for your vitamin C serums or if you like the Ordinary's retinol you could throw your retinol, uh, you know, they, they recommend you refrigerating your retinol serums uh, for the ordinary uh, after opening. So that's where you would have your skincare fridge ready to go. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Peace.